This film will prove that you can't be in favor of marine life along the Jersey Shore and sand pumping. You just can't have it both ways. Ask any tiny brine shrimp, and he will tell you that the Jersey jetties where he lives are rich in marine life, even better than many coral reefs in the tropics. The little shrimp realizes that most people don't know that, so he wants to show off his neighborhood. Baby rock crabs by the thousands start life in a living mussel bed. These beds are usually located on the inside corners of jetties where they meet the beach or in and around freestanding pilings. After they grow a little larger, the crabs will move out and fend for themselves. Large blue crabs roam the shallow overhangs where they can hide. Many are females with eggs. This one has probably heard that his home is going to be smothered with sand. By autumn, those little rock crabs have gotten big enough to haunt the fronts of the jetties, and they will stay all through the winter. Staying together and finding a good group hiding place is first on the priority list for baby black sea bass. Because they can find such a place, the likelihood is that they will stay in our area. Juvenile porgies, in the hopes of getting to be big porgies, stick together in a school where they are near food and hiding spots. These schooling fish depend on structure habitat to survive. Also, as you can see, every inch of the structure is covered with life, just like a coral reef. Mullet, a delicious prey item for large game fish, school up and keep one shoulder to the jetty as they watch out for a roaming pack of bluefish or striped bass that might ruin their day. Little snapper bluefish stage over the jetty in autumn, waiting for decreasing light levels and water temperature that signals them to move south. True to their friendly reputation, banded rudderfish abandon their conference to rush over to say hi to me and then rush back to important business. Baby northern puffers copy the other juveniles you've seen and hug the jetty for comfort and food. They are a favorite prey item when small of the striped bass. Looking like a pudgy escapee from a tropical aquarium, a boxfish hunkers down as I float by. He is wary and very shy. A window pane flounder takes a lunch break and dines on a few of those brine shrimp you met earlier. No jetty, no shrimp, no shrimp, no flounder. Simple, huh? Common squid, looking like a disciplined parade of mini submarines, glide over shallow outstretched rocks looking for their next adventure. An uncommon sight, but impossible to see without the structure. Two hermit crabs, positioned between the rocks at the end of a jetty, attract my attention as a school of small striped bass, numbering in the hundreds, silently streams by. Blackfish of all sizes, acting for all the world like groupers that populate coral reefs, patrol the cracks and crevices of all the inshore structure. These fish, more than any other kind, depend on structure. If these places are covered up, the inshore blackfish will be gone. Gray triggerfish look more like tropical fish than any other that we support over shallow relief. They are first cousins to the triggerfish seen further south.
Were it not for jetties, pilings, muscle beds, and other structure, there would be no reason for world-class striped bass like this one to visit close to shore. Such places concentrate their prey items. One of my favorite spots, the north end of the Seagirt Rifle Range Beach in 1994. Memorize this for just a few minutes and I will show you what's been done to it. Enter the Army Corps of Engineers. They have falsely testified that there is no life to speak of around the shallow structures. So the sand pumping project goes forward, cheered on by shore real estate interests and politicians and funded by all taxpayers. In case you haven't heard, the project dictates propping up grains of sand as protection from ocean waves. They are scheduled to come back and re-insult the marine environment every six years for a total of 50 years. That is, if they can get funding. It's October 1997, and I'm standing in approximately the same spot I asked you to memorize from 1994. All the marine habitat, and indeed the marine life, is now smothered and covered with sand. As a gray-black slurry and sand gushes out of the pipe, seagulls wait for tidbits to eat. The slurry slides back into the surf, mixes with and discolors the seawater, and goes wherever the current takes it. The only analytical requirement for this mixture is that it be 67% sand of a certain grain size. This seagull has scavenged a dead trigger fish from the slurry. During the time period of the sand pumping, there was a seagull die-off. Many gulls were found dead. Could it just be coincidence? If you don't think the discolored water is unpleasant for the gulls, why aren't they sitting in it? They are all on the north side of the jetty in the still clear water. The Elbron section of Long Branch is miles north of the active pumping and with the common south to north littoral drift the discolored water has evidently affected the marine life. Any creature that can swim paddle, crawl, roll, or backstroke has left the area. In this area where earlier you saw blackfish, stripers, crabs, and other sea life, there is nothing. While inshore fishermen have blamed the lack of fish on low fish populations, we see it as the sea life's reaction to the diluted gray-black slurry. This summer flounder seems stressed enough so he is not able to camouflage his skin color to his surroundings. When he is up and swimming, he is obviously not moving naturally. We have seen many others like this washing around in the surf. That same spot in Seagirt three weeks after the last time you had a view of it. The lifeless tips of the jetties have again been exposed. Six to seven feet in height of sand has been lost in those three weeks. No telling how much width is gone. And with it, millions of dollars of taxpayers' money is being laundered out at sea. One week later, the north jetty of Manasquan Inlet on the ocean side of the tip. This area is usually a boulevard of all kinds of marine life, coming, going, and hiding. Now, dead, covered with sand. Nothing exists in the crevices, the ledges, anywhere. One has to be sympathetic towards this baby blackfish, not knowing where to go or what to do.
Two dead starfish, one with an appendage thrown over its back in a death pose. More dead and dying starfish, and a dead Bregal on the top of a rock. Your tax money at work. The evidence is in, and there should be no more argument. You know about what was there, and what is happening to it, and what you and I must do about it. Tell your elected officials. Write to the governor. Their office is required to answer your letter within a short time. There are other ways to accomplish beach protection, not involving pumping sand against the sea. Help us speak for the fish. Thank you very much.